Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. I'm Nick Monticelli live here in Sterling Heights. Sterling Heights and Macomb County launching a $10 million project, hoping that some of these potholes along Mound might get just a little bit better. Garden City High School put on lockdown after a bullet is found on campus. And after three days, the rain is finally starting to slow down. And that is where we start, right here in the Weather Center. The rain beginning all sorts of flooding problems across the area. We are starting to dry out, but still, like you've said many times, that ground is not soaking up the rain, and we've got some flood issues. No, yeah, we, it is frozen still, as warm as it's been yeah. 65 yesterday. It was, did feel strange. It was nice, <laughs> but it takes a while for that ground to soften up, absorb the water, plus the snow melts, and the continuous rain, which is just now beginning to shut off here on the east side and southern Ontario. You will follow suit shortly. Numbers have been cooling all morning earlier at 430 this morning when we came on the air we were near 50 degrees and we're at 38 now at Metro Howells at 35 37 in Lapeer and Monroe upper 30s as well this is a six hour replay of the rain that was just hammering us all morning slowing down that morning drive and we are getting more information about this flood watch which is now set to expire at 4 p.m today and this means that low lying flood prone areas will start to see conditions improving a little bit but don't take it for granted especially some of the area rivers that are still rising and those flood warnings along our rivers will continue until further notice staying cloudy upper 30s to near 40 this afternoon may get a peak or two of sun but Karen it's a brief drying out details on more wet weather coming up. All right, thank you, Brandon. After three days of rain, there's some serious flooding near the Clinton River. This is new video from Sky 4 at River Vista Street and Davis in Utica. You can see the entire neighborhood impacted by the flooding. The Clinton River is overflowing, and this flood water may continue to rise as it continues to rain. And take a look at this scene from Sky 4 of the River Raisin in Monroe County. The water was at 8.7 feet and rising at 1 a.m. today. By the way, flood stage is 9 feet. We are getting close. The crest is expected to be at 9.7 feet tomorrow morning. The river and the area streams and creeks are swollen with melted snow and more than an inch of moisture that has fallen since Monday. We will have a live report from the hardest hit areas ahead on Local 4 News at 5. A follow up to breaking news we've been following all morning long. A lockdown at the Garden City High School has been lifted. The school was placed on lockdown just after 8 o'clock this morning after a bullet was found inside the school. Police did not order an evacuation and investigators determined no specific threats had been made against the school or its students. So at this time, still no word on where that bullet came from, but no weapon was found. Right now, it is pretty difficult to drive in Metro Detroit and not see a pothole, and one road seems to be the worst. But now there is a plan to fix Mound Road in Macomb County. Let's get right to Nick Monticelli. He's in Sterling Heights with details of a much needed project. Nick. Karen, good afternoon to you. This project is going to span from 14 Mile Road all the way up here to 18 Mile Road, trying to rehabilitate both the north and southbound lanes of Mound. Take a look at this video, but you don't really need to see it to know it because if you drive along Mound, you know the potholes are just disastrous. Now, this project is going to cost about $10 million, 10.2 to be exact. It's going to start as soon as possible, maybe in June once the weather breaks a little bit and they can allow those workers to begin their work. Now, this is something they have been working on or talking about for a while. There is a larger project at play here, a $217 million project that is kind of getting pushed off. There are question marks around the funding for that. So Sterling Heights and Macomb County got together and said, what can we do in the interim? And this $10 million is essentially a band-aid until that larger complete reconstruction is able to happen. Now you may be wondering why just 14 mile road now? Why not all the way down to 696? The answer, there's just not enough money. This $10 million project can be backed by some federal grants and federal money. Those dollars are not available south of 14 mile road because of the city limits. The other thing that's interesting is that County Executive Mark Ackland here in Macomb County essentially said, Mound Road at times, it's so bad, 
then consider closing it. We got to figure this out. That's when Mayor Taylor came and said, hey, we got, we got a problem because our fire department, our police department are complaining because of the problems. This is a dangerous road. We may have to shut it down. And we agreed. This may be a situation where we're going to have to shut this down. And that is something I doubt any commuter would want to see unless, of course, you're one of those who has a damaged tire or a wheel because of these disastrous potholes. So again, looking here at Mound, this project going to start in June, $10 million, but this is essentially just a Band-Aid. This is just to get us through about five, seven years from now until that larger project is able to start. And in then, and only then, will the huge final reconstruction begin. We're live here in Sterling Heights, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Pretty frustrating, and considering June is still four months away, we're going to probably have a few more flat tires. Thank you, Nick. We appreciate it. Other news we're following at this hour. A teen locked up accused of making a threat against South Lyon High School. Police say 17-year-old Ryan DeBrune allegedly asked a friend through Snapchat if he wanted to, quote, reenact the Florida school shooting. That friend informed investigators. Deputies quickly conducted a search of DeBrune's home and did not find any firearms. He was arraigned yesterday. He remains in custody at this hour. The 17-year-old will be back in court next Wednesday. Michigan State Police Trooper loses control of his cruiser and crashes. It happened overnight in Madison Heights on southbound I-75 near 12 Mile. Officials tell Local 4 the trooper was trying to catch up to another vehicle when he lost control and hit a median wall. He was hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries and has since been released. The world's best-known evangelist, the Reverend Billy Graham, has died. The son of a North Carolina dairy farmer lived to become one of the most beloved and most powerful religious leaders of our time. He was the unofficial pastor of the White House, giving spiritual counsel to every president since Truman. He also made the Gallup survey of the 10 most admired men in the world 37 times. During his life, he traveled the world, preaching to an estimated 215 million people in 185 countries. Graham was 99 years old. President Trump is facing calls at this hour to act in the wake of the latest mass shooting which killed 17 people at a high school in Florida and the White House is not ignoring them. Today the president will host a listening session with high school students and teachers at the White House. Trump's support for any tightening of gun laws would mark a change for a Republican who was endorsed by the National Rifle Association gun lobby. On Tuesday, the president directed the Justice Department to quickly complete a proposed rule that would ban bump stacks, which make it easier to quickly fire rounds. Local 4 News at noon. We're just getting started. Still ahead, an entire town turns orange. New video capturing a dust storm that took families by surprise. They broke into a liquor store by ramming a van in the front of the store, and that was just the beginning of their robbery spree. But first, a barista attacked at knife point, and the attacker was after more than just cash. This winter. Some terrifying video captured on surveillance cameras at a Washington State coffee shop. You can see the barista making coffee for a man standing just outside the window. While she's not looking, take a look at what he does. He climbs through the window, and then he forces her to leave the coffee stand with him and then attempted to sexually assault her before another customer scared him away. The man is on the loose. Police consider him armed and dangerous. California police are looking for thieves who broke into two liquor stores Monday morning, stealing an ATM from one of them. Take a look as the back end of a delivery van actually smashes through that front door of the liquor store. At least three men, a driver and two men in ski masks, start to rob the place. About 30 minutes later, the same crew breaks into another business just down the road. Stores are back open today, but have considerable damage to repair, as well as, of course, recovering cash from that stolen ATM. Police still investigating. Let's go to Australia. We had a foggy start to the week here in Metro Detroit, but that is nothing compared to this. This is a dust storm that just swept across Australia yesterday. You're looking at video from Charlesville. It's a small town just south of Queensland where the orange dust caused low visibility, actually bends some trees. And it happened for more than an hour, later coating the city in orange. No injuries were reported. The storm has since dissipated. New at noon.
Wondering about your blood pressure? Well, you may have seen this product on TV or social media. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'm putting the Color Doctor blood pressure monitor to the test to see if it could help you. Some good news as we start to dry things out. Rain is moving out and the bigger view looks pretty good for now, but we have three more days in a row with wet weather to detail for you next. The Olympics are about tradition, but this year, some new twists on old themes. Oh, oh no, the goes down. Bumping, drafting, sprinting. It's called Mass Start, one of three new sports at these 2018 Winter Olympics. Well, the Mass Start is like NASCAR on ice. On skates, skis, and boards, this is not your parents' Olympics. Three new sports adding new levels of speed, danger, and a little mayhem. What's not to like? Today at 5. Right now, put a stop. All right, weather is a very big story today. Uh, we're starting to dry out, but that just really doesn't seem very comforting knowing that we see some of these rivers and creeks just swelling. It's terrible, and a lot of people's basements yeah. also. This is not something we like to see this time of year. More of a spring and summer type phenomenon, but with the rain, the snow melts, and the hardened, frozen ground, these are some of the problems that we are getting. Flooded streets, flooded basements, and our rivers are still rising, so that's something we want to watch for. But since Monday, a three-day uh, total of three and a half inches out in Jackson, Pinckney in Livingston County, 3.36 inches, more than an inch a day here over the last three days, 2.88 inches in Flint, our, our Paul Gross reporting in from Farmington Hills, 2.33 inches and Detroit, two and a quarter inches Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and pretty much Dunsky with the rain, at least for now. and. All of tomorrow, but then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have another stretch of some wet weather coming in. We had a cold front slide through this morning and the numbers are really stalled out here, not wanting to warm up a whole lot and without a lot of sun, probably not going to get much improvement, but 38 at Metro 39 Gross Eel, uh, Pontiac's at 36, 37 Mount Clemens, 35 in Howell right now. And these numbers compared to yesterday at noon, 20 plus degrees colder that 24 hour temperature change out in Denver, Colorado. They saw a 70 degree temperature change in like 40 hours. So we're doing all right here. Our flood watch expires at 4 p.m. And this is for flood prone low lying areas to see additional flooding. We still could see some basements flooding. So everybody is watching. Flood watch, we're all on the lookout. The brighter greens here, the Clinton River, Cass River, River Rouge, Raisin River down south, these are all flood warnings for rising waters that Karen talked about until further notice. We need to pay close attention to and avoid those areas. Uh, there goes the rain pulling out. Still have some in parts of southern Ontario, but that rain is ending. Maybe a peak or two of some sun. Low 40s, probably as good as it will get. Overnight down to 25. And with all of the moisture, watch out for patchy fog if you're out on the roads early tomorrow. And maybe a little patchy ice from any refreezing we have out there. Don't see a whole lot of trouble here. I quickly want to get into the model and just show you the rest of today dry. Tomorrow it's a close call with some snowflakes close to the Ohio border in the morning. Uh, but then on Friday, it starts as a little wintry mix here, changing to morning rain showers. But the afternoon Friday should be drier, mid 40s. And then late Saturday, early Sunday, Karen, another round of, yes, rain. All right, thank you very much, Brandon. All this week, we are talking about products that you see on TV, and then we're taking them and putting them to the test. You may have seen commercials for a simple portable at-home blood pressure monitor called the Color Doctor, but is it really worth your money? Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is putting that to the test. He joins us from the newsroom with what he found. 
Measuring your blood pressure at home when you're most relaxed can be helpful, so a small device like this has real potential. But to be useful, it needs to be accurate, reliable, and consistent. In less than one minute, Color Doctor will give you a clear and accurate blood pressure reading, like lights on a traffic signal. The Color Doctor is marketed as a convenient, easy-to-use home blood pressure monitor that even helps you interpret the readings with a brightly lit color screen where green indicates a normal blood pressure, yellow indicates a prehypertensive or modestly increased pressure, and red indicates a high blood pressure. Now it's not a bad idea since many people might get confused by the targets for the top and bottom or systolic and diastolic blood pressure goals. The packaging is compact and convenient with an included storage or travel case. To measure your blood pressure and pulse, the instructions indicate that you put the strap around your forearm slightly above your wrist, rest your elbow on a firm surface, and raise the color doctor so it's at the same level as your heart. Relax and press the start button. Now as far as reliability goes, this was a problem. Finding the right place on my arm where it could take a reading was not easy. Often it either gave an error or failed to inflate, which was irritating. Consistency was also a challenge. From one reading to the next or with different arm positions, one reading might be red or high, the next one green and low, then yellow or elevated. Most important of all, of course, is accuracy. Is it measuring my correct blood pressure? To find out, I recruited Danielle, one of the ER nurses at Henry Ford Hospital, to measure my blood pressure manually, which is the most accurate. Blood pressure number one. I'm trying to be relaxed and zen. The manual was 124 over 72. And compared it to the color doctor measurement. Error. Let's try that again. Level of my heart. Error. Now, so that error is probably making my blood pressure go up. After several tries and repositioning, it finally a measurement, 122 over 87, which is a yellow, slightly elevated blood pressure. Not accurate compared to the manual reading of 124 over 72. Now, I really wanted this to work. It's a good idea in a small package. Unfortunately, in my real world test, it was unreliable, inconsistent, and not really that accurate. So I'm gonna pass, back to you. All right, appreciate that, Doc. So that means, unfortunately, the color doctor is disqualified from metal contention. Yep, great idea, just could not deliver when it counts. More gold medals will be handed out tonight in South Korea. Our coverage kicks off at 7.30 with the Olympic Zone. Then primetime coverage with men's freestyle skiing and women's bobsled. Coming up, a deputy's wild night caught on cell phone video. See what happened when he came face to face with a pig that was running through downtown Dallas. Well, a Dallas sheriff's deputy had a pretty wild night capturing an unusual fugitive, one with a curly tail and hooves. Take a look. Sounds familiar. Fortunately, this deputy managed to grab the female pig before it was hit by a train or any oncoming traffic. In case you're wondering, it's pretty standard for all Texas deputies to carry rope, but it's not often they use it outside the rural farming areas of the state. Where it is, the pig's okay. Thanks so much for being with us for Local 4 News at Noon. Have a great day, everybody.